regard to Grange, though, um, the, these clinics are, and there's a little bit of a misnomer, people thinking they are Grange Green Hawking clinics. They're literally any Penfold red wine, 15 years or older. So it can be Canunga Hill, it can be Bin 28, as long as they're 15 years or older. Yeah. The most important thing, though, about clinics is they're free. <laughs> Well, uh, let's make a start. Um, this one here just qualifies. Yes. It's, it's a 15-year-old Grange for 96. It's actually a very good Grange for 96. But when we talk about the wines, we try and take a little bit of the emotion out of it. And this is a text which you may have seen in the Wards of Patience. And this is edition 6. Now, if we were to look up this text, you'd look up 96 Grange. So, in other words, what I'll try and do is I'll try and handle, do you use that expression here, handle? Mm -hmm. I'll try and deflect any sort of personal uh, responsibility or whatever in terms of assessment at this point. I'm not really, I'm just uh, looking up while we're speaking what the experts say sure. about the 96. And you'll see here, from now to 2040, literally. Now, that assumes, though, <coughs> These wines are all out of our museum. This is best case scenario. This, I don't know, maybe you had it under the bed, maybe you had it in the loft, maybe it yeah. was kept on top of the refrigerator. I don't yeah. know, I don't know. But in other words, this is for perfectly solid, and right. hopefully this is ideally solid, but you never know. So every bottle tells its own story, and you literally never know what you have until you pour a sample. And we pour a 15 mil sample which by volume is 2% or less of the content of the bottle. And that's literally the only way we can tell whether that wine is as it should be for that given vintage. Because we actually only certify if it is as it should be. If it isn't, right. it might still be a lovely drink. It's a white dot, plain cork, no capsule, no certification. So that's really the worst case scenario. It's all a lovely drink, but it's not quite looking as it should, so it can't get certified now. Richard is here, I'm not too sure where, you may have been speaking, the gentleman from Christie's is with just two clients who have just left. If, for example, people bring in a 51 or a 55, and, right. you know, obviously then the, uh, from a monetary perspective, right. you're looking at the equivalent of an automobile, right. 50 odd thousand for a 51, 52,000 in fact. So there's a little bit more pressure assessing that bottle. Right. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. So this is a beautiful wine. I guess the first question would be though, do you actually want to have it recorked? Which seems like an odd thing to ask someone who's come from a recorking clinic. But if you're looking at that, that's actually in pretty good condition. Yeah, it hasn't aged it hasn't yeah. aged too much. Now, there are two ways of looking at this. It's already 15 years of age. And you might say, oh no, I've got this important anniversary, another 30 years, and you know, I really need prevention of death and cure. I'm here, I've come all the way in, let's recork it. That might be one approach. The other approach may be one of, um, well, this way I get to taste it now and I'll still put it away for 20 or 30 years because we pour a little bit in the assessment. But the onus is on the owner um, in terms of whether or not to recall because that decision is an important sure. decision. I yes. like course of action number two, okay. which is we will open it, right. we will taste it, and then we'll drink it in 20 years. Fantastic. I like that response. Because I'm not planning on selling it. So uh -huh. We will eventually drink it. Yes. Well, from a secondary market perspective, the, the thing about this wine, other than sharp capsules on 96, which we've got about, <laughs> uh, we've actually, look, even though the cork looks all right, do you see that little, mm -hmm. yeah. I, I, yeah, I don't right. think that's the world's best 96 cork. Even though that's probably at the original fill height. But who knows? You know, no two talks are the same. But once no the capsule's off, off, Peter, it's what, past that what were you pointing to there? Was it a. Oh, just a little bit of running and soaking up the cork. Yeah, and a few little travel lines. Will you ever go to something other than cork? Uh, we have for our white wines. Uh, we've been using for 40 years now, over wow. screw cap. If you were to visit our winery, you could see the 1971 Autumn Riesling on the screw cap 40 years ago. I've been there. Aha. Well, the whites, tried and proven the screw cap. Reds. All right. Oh, well, then. But the reds, some of our reds, depending upon the market, we offer a screw cap alternative, uh, but Grange, no one equal. We do, though, have Grange un tried under screw cap, under glass. We are always looking at all options. But this thing, when it's well. Well, it's a good cork. It's a good seal. Mm -hmm. The thing is, people blame the corks for everything. Yeah. 
you know, if mm -hmm. this bottle were down here in level, people would say, oh, it's the cork. No, the cork is a barometer. It's symptomatic of the bad <coughs> summering, the, sure. the fluctuation. Uh, now, the cork's just showing the symptoms. Uh, right. But people blame the cork. You know, the fact that it's been at, you know, 110 degrees for three weeks right. and the temperature dropped and it was at 60 and right. then up. Right. You know, fixed volume, 750 mil. Mm -hmm. Increase the temperature, increase the internal pressure. Oscillate the temperature and you end up with a piston pump right. mm -hmm. on the cork. Then, oh, guess what? The cork starts to leak and they blame the cork. Mm -hmm. It's the provenance. It's the summary. So these recorking clinics aren't just about putting new corks into old bottles. We talk about, you know, drinking windows. We talk right. about summering. We talk about all sorts of things, oh, as well as recorking. Okay. All right. Well, now an important. Now we can use <laughs> two different types of ways of getting this out. Now you've got to remember some of the wines that we use are uh, from, oh, well, we opened it from the 1950s, the 1960s or whatever, so corks, when they get really old, tend to crumble. So if we use what's called a butler's thief, this minimises the crumbling. Why do we eradicate it, but it will minimise the risk. The other thing we do is quite often, these are screw pull corkscrews, mm -hmm. slightly mm -hmm. wider bore, Teflon coated with a little bit of flex. And we'll use two of them together into like a double helix. Oh. And what this does is it pushes the cork and sure. out in one go. But um, I'll, I'll use this today because this is as good as any. Now, we're using an inert gas. As soon as the cork comes out, this goes in. Ordinarily, we use a cylinder. Okay. Uh, but because we're travelling in America, quarantine, security, sure. it's only about you know, carrying gas cylinders and aeroplanes because all this is you know, flying around. Right. So on this particular tour, we're using that. But ordinarily, we have big cylinders of argon, and carbon dioxide, and nitrogen to create an inner gas cover over the surface of the wine during the assessment. Okay. So, in this instance, let's have a look. Yeah. They called it butler's thief because in the old days, add it, calm, have a little drink, put, put a bit of water in, no one would ever know, put it back in. Yeah, yeah. Butler's thief. <laughs> And it's like a temporary filling. Now, in the instance of this wine, um, the temptation would be to pour a little bit of wine for the assessment, we pour 15 ml or less. So we're only pouring 2% or less of the content of the bottle into the glass for the assessment. If you pour any more, you're really starting to affect the integrity of the wine. The other thing is too, we only ever recork once. Because for example, if you bring the same bottle in 15, 20 years time, you pour another 15 ml, now it's you know, 30 ml, now it's 4%. Mm -hmm. So we'll only ever recork once. Which is a reason why we don't tend to recommend recorking wines that are only 15 years. You know, like from a, a secondary market perspective, think, oh, hang on, 15 years, whereas 50 years, 40 years, <coughs> not a problem. But I'm deliberately not tasting that and I'm looking at it too quickly because you'll well, you could create an incorrect first impression. So I just let it open up, awaken. Colour looks good. In fact, colour looks terrific. No, no real problems here. You know. And the other thing is too, we're talking, if anything were to be corked, the bottle gets replaced anyway, <coughs> because that's our, that's our process. Really? That's our policy, yeah, to replace any wine that is corked. But in all <coughs> of the years of clinics, we've had so few, because the wines are 15 years or older, and the TCA cork tank wasn't an issue, really, mm -hmm. to the same degree back then as it is, well, has been recently. <coughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Now, 
symbolically what I'm doing here is now I'm quite confident this is going to be topped, so not a problem there. But as I say, if you can pretend this is a 51 or 52 or 55, you now, as owners, have a chance to taste your wine rather than open it years from now. You know what it looks like at this point of time in September of 2011. So there are many other you know, spin-offs of this recorking. You see, I believe uh, the tour of the feet, you know, they'll run the odd recorking thing, but you drop a bottle off, you come back a day or two later, it's restored, and off you go. You have no idea whether it's certifiable or whatever, it's just been recorked. This is more than recorking, the certification. And Richard's very, very keenly over there looking at all of this, pretending he's talking to someone, but he's watching our every move. He's probably got a few cameras getting around here too. But, uh, yeah. So what Andrew's kindly done is he's actually now filled it a little bit higher than necessary, deliberately, because he's going to just re-equilibrate the level to the exact level rather than second guess with an implement over here. Sure. Okay. Now, because that's certifiable, I will... Uh, this, this clinic here, everything is monitored. You know, people say, oh, but isn't there a risk of fraud? You're taking court See, this is all very, very, you know, tenuous. But what happens is because we are certifying this, this is just temporary, that number here, that goes in here, and it matches the number on this, which I'll now fill out. So 1996 grain. signed off, and there are all sorts of black light things happening in here and you know, all sorts of things that we can't even really talk about. <laughs> Already too, that the bottle is laser etched, mm -hmm. the name that's all laser etched into the glass from a fraud perspective, just in case. Here, and once on, you'll never get that off after a few hours. But that number there corresponds with this number here. This all gets entered into a data bank. So, in reality, this bottle is easier to trace and track than a wine off a bottling line. So, it's you know, more reliably exactly what it should be. Range Recorking Clinic 2011. Oh. Now, if we put a white dot on this wine, because it wasn't acceptable, but still drinkable, it would get just a plain fault. Or if it were a Grange, not Grange, 707 Stonery, it would get a pen fault in recording for any fault. So I'll just put this up here. Yeah. Yeah. So a plain cork, if it's not certified, all right, so just nice, no markings, you know, you haven't lost anything, you came in, you got your wine recork, plain cork. If it were, say, in 707, <coughs> it would just read pen folds and Recorking clinic. Yeah. Yeah. And extended yeah. range. Yes, yeah. range. All right, now what Andrew is first going to do is he's actually <coughs> going to re equilibrate the level of the wine in the bottle. People say, I'll put a bit more wine in, you know, as if they're getting an extra five mil. Well, you can actually, if you go over a certain height, you're doing yourself a disservice because there's no expansion rate. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's why bottles leak quite often. Andrew, can I just throw that in my glass? Because I don't want <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> okay, I'll let you take over. So what would, the next step now is once it's all been uh, calibrated, mm. we put a new cork in with the uh, vacuum corker. And this is all done that, so that when the cork actually goes in, sorry about that, <coughs> it um, takes all the air and everything Sucks out of here. Right. And just as the bottle goes up, just before the cork goes in, it creates a vacuum, so that as the cork's pushed in, there is a slight vacuum in the headspace, which also helps in the aid of holding the cork in the bottle. So I'll